Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that uh, warm welcome. You are always great at uh, backhanded compliments. <laughs> First of all, I have to uh, lay some ground rules. There are some Leafs fans here I know, and it's uh, no secret I play for the Ottawa Senators, so there is no booing. But uh, I will meet you in the middle, and you can say Elfie sucks, so that's okay. Good afternoon, students, faculty, friends. During my time at UCC, I always enjoyed the speakers. Famous roars, newscasters, lawyers. I have some pretty high expectations to live up to, but I'll admit I, I'm a little bit nervous. But during my time here, I went through a lot of ups and downs, and I had to fight the butterflies a lot of it, a lot of times. And it was, could have been between my, or before my IB2 exam, or it could have been before the championship hockey game versus St. Andrews. Congratulations again on beating them. I never liked them. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I think those experiences helped shape my life. And they allow me to speak for you today. Today I'd like to talk to you about how my experiences here at UCC gave me the tools to manage my life. It helped me prepare for college and professional hockey. And the tools I want to talk about today are a willingness to learn, time management, and taking advantage of your opportunities. I remember my first, first day at UCC very, very well. I remember driving up that long driveway, seeing cars like Lexus and Mercedes, and it was the first time I'd ever seen a Hummer. And getting out of these cars were people of different nationalities and races, and they were carrying oboes, violins, lacrosse sticks, painting canvases. I looked at my dad and I said, oh boy. <laughs> I was way in over my head. I wasn't in St. John's anymore. And if I wanted to learn how to be a good UCC student, I had to learn it fast. I remember Mr. McKay, my headmaster at the time, he sat me down before school and he told me, it's not the quality of work here, but the quantity that gets people into trouble. You have to hit the ground running. He essentially taught me that I had to learn to live on my own. I remember, what was it, I had like foot fungus or something? It was something disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I had to schedule a doctor's appointment and find my way there in a city I didn't know. I mean, it might seem easy to you guys, but I always had my mom take care of that back in Newfoundland. Not anymore. I was learning to take care of myself, but becoming a good UCC, UCC student took time. However, I had great teachers like Mr. Turner, my old soccer coach who's here today, and Mr. Williams, my old chemistry teacher, and they taught me that a willingness to learn would help my over, overall situation here. They taught, me, they taught me that if I got a good grade in chemistry or biology, then I had more time to spend on athletics. I had the right mentors to reach me and instill the right habits in me. In fact, he, Mr. Williams used to teach me uh, chemistry by comparing it to hockey. And you taught me organic chemistry by comparing it to a power play. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me. <laughs> because I had the support and resources necessary, my willingness to learn was a catalyst for another important skill I learned here, time management. I want to say something to everyone here. I have the deepest respect for anybody who can get to this school. The International Baccalaureate Program was one of the most difficult challenges in my life. Now, I can't really describe how you learn time management. Although I think everybody here can safely say you somehow learn it in this school or you won't get through it. But I'm here to tell you, once you graduate from this place, you are going to be so well prepared for the next step. In my first year of college, I was voted the most promising rookie on my hockey team. And it wasn't my skills at hockey that warranted this. It was my skill at managing my life. I had the academic capacity to understand the class material, and if I didn't, I had the confidence to know who could help me and where to find them. I had time managing skills. I knew when my classes were over, 
I had a pre-practice lift. I had a two-hour practice at least, if not three hours. And then I had to go find somewhere to eat or cook something myself. That leaves two hours to study calculus or chemistry or whatever I had. And then I have to head to bed and make sure I get eight hours of sleep so I can do it all again tomorrow. These were skills I learned here at UCC. At Cornell, like Steve mentioned, a lot of my teammates in their first year struggled. They struggled with dealing with high-end academics and, and athletics. It's difficult for some people if they don't go through something like we, we've gone through. And I'll tell you honestly that that wasn't a problem for me. In my last two years at Cornell, I was voted the captain of the team. It was something I took very, very seriously. I was able to establish myself as a leader early on, and I attribute this to my preparation at UCC. I'll also tell you that the skills learned here at UCC helped my journey to the NHL. Now, a lot of you might be shaking your heads, you're like, where's the connection there? You know, high school, NHL, it's a willingness to learn and time management. Yes, you need certain hockey skills, we all know that. But the professional game is as much of a mental game as it is a physical one. Playing 82 games, and sometimes 82 games plus, is as much of a mental grind as it is a physical one. And one advantage I had over a lot of players in the pros was the mental grind I had gone through here and at Cornell. To truly learn how to play in the NHL, you have to be physically and mentally strong, and I was. I learned how to, my, my coaches were astounded in how fast I picked up the professional game. I learned system formation, nutrition, sleep. I learned how to deal with a 10-hour bus ride coming back all night after playing a three and three. I learned from my veterans and I paid attention to them on a day in and day out basis. And I was confident my good habits would lead to success, and they did. On February 1st of last year, I played my very first NHL game against the New Jersey Devils. That night of February 1st, I took advantage of my opportunity and I proved I could play at the NHL level. However, rising to the challenge was a skill I learned here at UCC. Now, to illustrate my point, I want to tell you about the last time UCC won its Hockey League championship, before this year, of course. So, we were playing in Buffalo, New York against Nichols. We were up 1-0 in the series where one more win would secure the league championship. And the game was back and forth, really intense. The crowd hated us, just loud and obnoxious. And to make things even more intense, unfortunately, before the third period ended, one of our assistant coaches suffered a seizure right, like, right behind me. And all, while all this was going on, I knew there was two coaches from Cornell up there scouting me. So let's recap. Coach is taken off on a stretcher. Really intense game, crowd hates us opportunity to impress Cornell, and we're tied going into overtime. I was pretty nervous. But when I went back on the ice, I told myself one thing. I was ready for this. I didn't have to worry about a paper to write because it was already done. I didn't have to worry about playing the right way because I had learned and trained for it all year. With that thought in mind, I went back on the ice, I played my heart out, and I scored the overtime winner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you hurt my confidence. I got to kind of build myself back up. <laughs> I took full advantage of the opportunities presented to me that game. The coaches of Cornell were impressed, and we started a relationship where I ended up going to Cornell University. However, it was what happened after the game that I remember, like, the most vividly from that night. I remember Jared Ross, who was my teammate at the time, he went and grabbed the game puck and he brought it over to me. And I looked at it and I thought, how special this puck would be. How, how much of a great keepsake it would be for me. But I looked over at my coach at the time, Kent Hutton. And, oh yeah, you know him. <laughs> and what you need to know about Coach Hutton is how much work he put in that year. And keep in mind, UCC had lost in the finals the last two years. It only took me a second, but I knew who deserved that puck. I skated over to him, I handed him the puck, I said, coach, this is for you. And in the years since, we've met a number of times, and he's told me how much that puck, you know, how much he appreciates that puck. 
So not only did I seize my opportunity that night to further my career and win a championship, but I also saw an opportunity to develop a special friendship with my coach, who's been a great mentor for me. As students of UCC, we learn essential life skills very early. We have an edge when we graduate, and it's this edge that separates us from others in the next step. Never forget how special the school really is and what it means to all of us. It's the first step in our lives that opens endless doors. I, like all of you, will never stop learning because it's ingrained in our personalities. Not only that, but it's something that UCC has taught us to embrace. It's this readiness for life after high school that gives us the confidence in everything we do, whether it's on the trading floor or even in a hockey rink. I want to thank you very much for allowing me to speak to you today, and I want to congratulate the graduating class of 2012 and wish everyone a very safe and happy summer. And if I can leave you with anything, just remember that if a kid from Newfoundland can go on to study at an Ivy League university and make it to the NHL, imagine what you guys can do. Thank you. Good job.